Good afternoon all. My name is Reed Gill and I will be hosting our today's session. I am working as an assistant professor at Baba Freed Group of Institutions. It also goes by the name of BFGI. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everyone who is a part of this webinar at this very moment. I hope that everyone is doing well and staying strong as we are moving through quite a challenging time right now. Uh, we are in a tough spot given the whole COVID situation. Um, however, what we can't lose is the sight of what's important. And I would like to mention it here that for BFGI, what's important is our goal of reaching to the masses and educating them. This institution has been in operation since 2006, delivering their promise of a quality education under the supervision of our Honorable Managing Director, Mr. G. S. Taliwal, combined with the best efforts from a highly qualified faculty, this institution has earned itself the reputation of quite a leader in education. And um, even during times like these, when we have been under a complete shutdown, we have been doing our best to guide our students and provide them with opportunities to enhance their knowledge. Apart from online classes that have been going out throughout the session, we have also organized many online activities for the students to keep them motivated. Since April of this year, uh, various departments of BFGI have conducted over 50 webinars, uh, seminars, workshops, uh, even talent hunt competitions to ensure students complete participation. Um, I think today's webinar is just another example demonstrating the same. Now, keeping our students' best interest in mind, uh, Department of Computer Science, BFGI, took this initiative of organizing a two-day webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning. I would like to mention it here that today's webinar has been organized in collaboration with some of the most prestigious institutes. Our first collaborator is, and when I say first, I'm not ranking people, it just is a random sequence of placement. Our first collaborator is a Moroccan Society of Engineering Sciences and Technology, which is of course in Morocco. This society has been founded by young researchers to promote science, technology, and innovation among PhD and engineering students. Now, apart from having uh, training courses, uh, this institute is also handling the dissemination of recent developments by organizing national and international seminars. The society is also a bridge for creating partnerships with various international universities and other institutes. Our second collaborator is a scientific innovation research group, which is in Egypt. It's a research group established by assistant professor Ahmed Alangar, Faculty of Computers and Information, Beni Suef University in Egypt. This group brings together active young Egyptian researchers and those with a professional interest in a particular aspect of Internet of Things, uh, robotics, intelligent environment, network security, machine learning, big data and authentication systems, and many other uh, disciplines related to this. Our third collaborator, National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, which is in Chandigarh. It is being led by Ms. Sunita Goyal, who is the acting director of this group. The center has been making an earnest endeavor to disseminate knowledge amongst government departments, boards, corporations, technical institutions, and general public as well. It is also helping entrepreneurs and young students to adapt to this field by choosing it as a career option. The center is an ISO certified institute since February 2002 and has been providing quality education in various streams of IECT. And finally, our fourth collaborator, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. It also goes by the name of IEEE, uh, Water Kitch Waterloo Kitchener Section, Canada. Uh, the core purpose of IEEE is to foster technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity. This is an institute with global presence with seven offices internationally. The focus is to be a trusted source of educational services and enhance public understanding of engineering and technology. They plan on doing that by building a strong network 
through collaborations and sharing of knowledge. Now, today's webinar would mark our fourth collaboration together, and uh, we look forward to many more in future. Now, before we get the webinar started, I would like to request Mr. Amandeep Singh, who is Dean Sciences, DFGI, to inaugurate <coughs> today's session and address the audience regarding the webinar. Please welcome Dr. Amandeep Singh. Uh, thanks, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, good afternoon to all. I am Dr. Amandeep Singh, Dean Sciences, Baba Preet College. First of all, I would like to congratulate organizers and Department of Computer Science for organizing webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, the objective of this webinar would be to uh, throw light on different aspects of uh, AI and machine learning, like data modeling, global optimization techniques, computer vision, mathematics for artificial intelligence and machine learning, trends and applications, supervised and unsupervised learning, which will benefit upcoming researchers who want to dig deeper in this field and for those who are already uh, doing research in this field. So we are fortunate uh, to have uh, renowned personalities among us to speak on these topics in this two days webinar. So I heartily welcome our esteemed experts, uh, Dr. Jayanta from uh, India, Professor Dr. Hana Ashmi from Morocco, uh, Professor Dr. K. Martin from India, Professor Dr. Ozan Ozar from Turkey, uh, Professor Dr. Hamid from Iraq, uh, Dr. Meher Chan from India. Finally, I welcome all the participants in this webinar. This webinar got huge response with 1500 plus participants from 29 countries worldwide. So I hope all the participants will get benefited out of this two days uh, webinar. So uh, with these words, I hand over the control uh, to the ma'am. So uh, for uh, further uh, thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Amandeep Singh for your kind words. Oh, we are grateful to your efforts for organizing the webinar and guiding us in making it beneficial for as many people as possible. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be a great opportunity for every attendee in this webinar. So thank you so much for making that happen, sir. Um, it is obvious that this webinar is not organized by one person. It has been made possible by joint efforts of a very capable team that has been working day and night. And I mean quite literally day and night. The team really has been working day and night for this. Uh, with that, let's welcome another member of that team, Dr. Manish Goyal, who is Assistant Director, School of Skilled Development, Engineering College, BFGI, uh, without whose insight we would be getting nowhere in this webinar. So let's hear from Dr. Manish Goyal. Thank you, Ritanda, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity to uh, say a few words on behalf of Baba Fred Group of Institutions and to address to our esteemed guests as well as our delegates from all over the uh, countries as well as uh, from India also. So very good afternoon to all our esteemed speakers, Professor Dr. Yamnam Jayanda from Guwahati, Assam, Professor Dr. Anna Hachini from Canada, Professor Dr. K. Martin Sagayam from Coimbatore, India, and the delegates of uh, who are participating in this webinar, two days international webinar, which is being organized by Baba Freed College on artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I take this opportunity on behalf of Baba Freed group of institutions uh, to interact with all of you uh, in this uh, very inaugural session of the first day international webinar. So before I say something about the journey of Baba Fit Group of Institution and its steps towards the academic excellence, I would like to share with some of the uh, collaborations of this, uh, I have been told by the organizers of uh, Baba, of this international webinar that uh, we have doing this, we are doing this webinar in collaboration with IEEE Canada, MS, EST, and NILETS, SIRG, EJEC. So uh, in collaboration with this, this webinar is being organized by Baba Fit College in which the delegates, uh, I'm delighted to share with you is that the more than 1500 
delegates from all over the uh, world you can say ki where the participants from more than 29 countries like kuwait iran iraq uae turkey morocco and many more and more than 28 uh, states as well as uts of uh, india like delhi jnk andhra pradesh gujarat himachal pradesh maharashtra and iits nits like iit delhi iit bombay iit dhanbad iit indore nit hamirpur and there there are are uh, delegates from 37 about international universities are participating in this uh, international webinar and the delegates from more than 80 uh, universities of uh, india as well as if i talk about our state of punjab more than 13 uh, universities uh, uh, of punjab state the delegates from these universities like central universities uh, uh, delhi university modi university university of kashmir the delegates from all over india are participating in this webinar so it is our uh, delighted experience to organize this seminar for all these person and i hope so that the, all the delegates will get the benefit out of this oh, very uh, new topic as well as which is the talk of the world that is artificial intelligence as well as the machine learning so i would like to share with you uh, in few words a brief journey of baba fried group of institutions ki from where it started so the institute uh, the baba fried group of institutes was started uh, in 1993 by its dynamic leader and chairman sadar gurmeet singh ji dhaliwal uh, who has started uh, this education uh, field from uh, nursery class and then grown up into the higher education up to 2005 where it has full class become into a higher education by covering the ugc aict and nict courses so baba fil group of institutions the it is a multi college campus associated with these university grant commission all india council for technical education and national council for technical education so all the courses are being affiliated with these uh, commissions so if i talk about the academic collaborations of baba fil group of institutions uh, we have the international collaborations with university of british columbia canada singapore university of technology singapore university of oslo norway thompson river university canada university of fraser valley canada and if i talk about some of the uh, reputed uh, institutes of india ki where we have collaborated i will name of you iit delhi and iit bombay with whom we have our academic collaborations for our faculties exchange for our uh, research and development projects as well as the curriculum development and uh, not uh, uh, least but last the skill development uh, uh, programs also so uh, baba fil group of institution has also its corporate collaborations as the corporate collaborations are also very important apart from the academic collaboration because without the uh, support of the corporates we cannot move further to where we want the students of our group of institution to go and uh, show their talent and skills so we have corporate collaborations with sap oracle microsoft hcl hp so these are some of the few names in which we have corporate collaborations so by keeping uh, its journey uh, towards the industrial collaborations also because uh, as long as we are only uh, uh, with the academics we cannot go far further so for that we have to do something in collaboration with the industry because if the industry will not come forward and take the students on its list for its development of its skills and support the uh, institutions in terms of its curriculum development and skill development nothing can be done so we have the member uh, we have industrial bodies collaboration also like fitki cii asocham psd chamber of commerce and aima so bridging the gap between the industry and academia these kinds of a collaborations are very 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 important so keeping it in view and going on the same steps we are working from the last 5 years on the developing the skills in our students so in this particular uh, field so we started with our school of skill development so which is one of the pillar of our academic education 
so uh, in school of skill development we try to bridge the gap between the industry and academia because sometimes academia and skills these are the two different parts whereas the industry sometimes cannot play role directly with the academic institution so we started our efforts by joining with the industries at the level for giving the skills to our students where we collaborated with national skill development uh, corporation of india nsdc and the various sector skill councils who are imparting the skills in terms of curriculum in terms of uh, practical knowledge to the students so we have collaborated with a number of sector skill councils like agriculture sector skill council automotive sector skill council electronics sector skill council telecom sector skill council nascom these are few of the sectors by, uh, with which we are associated and we are working to give the skills to our students as this is very 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 important so as nowadays ki as this pandemic situation is all over the world ki where it is any situation have given us a opportunity where this all have uh, made the whole world into single platform as we all about uh, 1500 person are sitting on this platform to listen to the esteemed speakers about the latest trends in the industry and uh, what are the uh, future technologies which are going to uh, develop our students as well as our country so by these words i would like to congratulate the organizers of this uh, international webinar and once again i would like to welcome our esteemed guests as well as the delegates for this international webinar uh, and i hope so the all the delegates from all the countries and whether well all the universities of india and states will are uh, going to get the benefit uh, and uh, i wish a very best of luck to the organizers also and with these words i would say uh, my thanks to the delegates as well as the organizers i, I will uh, ask ritender ma'am to uh, take this uh, webinar uh, oh. All right. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Goyal. I think it's wonderful what you have brought together, uh, especially given the circumstances. So we are nothing but thankful to you for making this happen. Uh, with that, guys, we are going to move forward and get started with the session. Uh, before that, uh, I would like to let all the audience know that we do have a feedback form for the webinar. Uh, we will be asking for the feedback separately for day one and day two. Uh, the link for the feedback will be posted towards the end of the webinar in the chat section. So whenever we post the link, please take a moment to provide your valuable input. Uh, let's get started with our session about AI and ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, the primary objective of this webinar is to provide an understanding of artificial intelligence and its modern day applications in machine learning. So just to speak of AI, um, it's the ability of a computer program or a machine to think like humans do. Uh, AI is using technology to do things which require human intelligence. Machine learning uh, is a subfield of AI and is its most common application. A computer system is fed data, which it uses to recognize patterns or behaviors, and then it makes a decision of its own, just like a human would do. But the only difference is that humans wouldn't have to program it. They do it on their own. A classic example would be uh, your computer automatically classifying email as a spam or non-spam. Uh, another example would be that of online games. Uh, there are many online games uh, that operate on AI. Online chess would be one. I know that one because I play this. Uh, and there are many other games who people already play and they are familiar with this feature of AI. Uh, the concept of AI sounds simple enough, um, although the working of this is a whole another story. Uh, I would say it's complex to say the least. Um, this is what we are going to talk about in our today's webinar. I'm sure all of you have been looking forward to this webinar, as am I. Uh, we have approached the time to officially commence our today's session. Uh, so please allow me to introduce our first panelist of the day, Professor Dr. Yamnam Jayanta, who is a PhD in computer science and has over 17 years of experience in research, training and management. 
Uh, Dr. Jayanta has worked as a senior software engineer at Tech Mahindra Limited, Mumbai, uh, Kian INC for Project Philip Morris, uh, which is in India and Nova Scotia. He has served as a lecturer at various international universities. Uh, Dr. Jayanta was appointed as professor and head of Department of Computer Science Engineering at Assam Dan Bosco University. At present, Dr. Jayanta is working with National Institute of Electronics and IIT with Government of India and also as a director to the same institute at Guwahati. At this position, Dr. Jayanta has completed many R&D projects uh, such as cybersecurity, forensics training, uh, setup of mini center of excellence on data science, job oriented trainings on various topics, uh, state and district level programs on e-waste. This does not cover all the projects that Dr. Jayanta has been a part of. There is a long list, but since we are on a time constraint, we are going to wrap that section up over here. Uh, Dr. Jayanta has over 40 research publications as well as two academic books to his credit. He has provided his guidance to many masters and PhD scholars acting as a principal investigator. Uh, so I think the bottom line is that we have quite an accomplished man here with us today. For that, we all are fortunate. Let's welcome Dr. Jayanta with us. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Off to you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good day to all participants. I'm very thankful to the team of Baba Farid College Punjab, Baba Farid College Punjab, which is uh, organizing this type of excellent uh, webinar on very recent things, which is very much important for this type of day. And I also want to welcome the participants who are eagerly waiting for the talks on this event. So if I have to start. So I welcome to this seminar to all participants. Again, <coughs> I'm very much thankful to Farid, uh, Baba Farid College Punjab again. And this is very much important uh, activity that we are going to perform in this, this last two days. And here I'm going to share uh, one case study that we are developing here, which is using a lot of data modeling in AI data warehouse. And some other uh, new software development processes like Agile, Scrum and other activity. So uh, I'm, I'm going to share a uh, uh, one case study on how we are using this AI modeling and the prediction. So uh, let's go to the table of the content. The first, the, uh, um, the overview that we have is something about what type of data and how we are going to do the modeling and different types of method and what are the facilities that Government of India is having in this AI. So please move to the uh, second slide. Second slide is about uh, the the case study. Okay, okay. So this is the this is the actual problem that we have. We intend to develop one medical expert system where you can see the inputs are coming from different angle, and I have uh, depict the same situation what is happening right now, and we are considering that we are going to collect information, a lot of information from these different type of world. So that is what we are calling as the data sources, and in order to collect the data sources, different type of modeling that we are going to do and what is how we are modeling and other thing I'm going to share step by step. And second one, what we are doing is whenever we are extracting the information from this type of system, which is very complex all over the world, different data models are going to use. When we are going to put this data model to data mars, data warehouse, we are going to use different data model. And when we are analyzing or we are uh, finding out the facts, what is happening in uh, 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 any part of the world, we are going to use the analytical models. So hands onward from the start of a uh, system to the end of the product, something called as a medical expert system, we are going to use different, different models. Please go to the next slide. So the next, next is when we, when we try to develop this type of expert system, we have to see what is happening in the real background. 
sir one one slide down okay this is this is where we want to work on the data model to the model to the prediction you can see here the data in, in order to find out <coughs> such type of expert system actually we need lot of data that we call as a dimension table fact table these concepts are coming from data warehouse when you go to the second thing that is all as a models these models are nothing these are coming from the rules these rules are going to become the data model in uh, uh, due courses and then from this data model the the data who pass through these models are going to be become as a report and from this report <coughs> we are going to <coughs> find out what will be the solution for this one one slide down sir and if we see the overview in the left side you can see what is really happening what is need in a business this is irrespective of the research that you guys are doing any business type of model can be fit in this model and you go to the right side you can see how the data are going to the field field to the record record to the database and the database to the data warehouse and you can see the last thing what we want to say is we are going to do some analytics we are going to some do some modeling unless and until your data are not pure your, your data are not clean then this this modeling of the data will not be happen so i'm going to share something how you are going to do the modeling and why these modelings are required in different phases of uh, uh, artificial intelligence next slide and this is about how a data warehouse look like in the left side left left side is uh, showing about the bird view if you see the data warehouse from the beginning or artificial intelligence system expert system from the top just like a bird then you can see this one but in the right side you can see the flow of data so then there are in the circle you can see the tables columns and the keys triggers models are there but in the third then you can see the layers so we are going to some share something about how this table how these layers are going to interact when you are doing the data, data modeling next sir and this is about the existing models that we have you can see lot of the features uh, models whatever the models that you have encounter whether it is a classification clustering a priori there are supervised and unsupervised uh, some of our experts are going to talk on this one and you can see so so many mod existing models are available there normally the researchers what they are doing is they take the piece of code or they make the, this uh, model available existing thing and they by bypass but what we are going to discuss here is how to do real model modeling for yourself only means you want to develop your own model which can be used in different different area for you as well as for the future uh, researchers next slide and this is about the word view uh, that we have discussed depth side and the right side you can see the technical view in the technical view there are different phases are there you can see the down part there there are some design of the sources data collections are there step number 2 is about the etl extraction transformation loading and number 3 is about the modeling of the data which is having bad quality problem and then finally is the design of the new rules that rules we are calling as a filter these are the filters that we call as a models next sir and different type of data are available nowadays so far we have been de dealing with the rows and column but the new data type available is a data cube so if you see the modeling there for example different sets of the uh, business can be divided into different different cubes and these cubes can be represented different different way so that you can analyze the system next and this is about if we want to know we want to know what is happening in different part of world then by looking from different different angle then we may also uh, uh, we can get the information what is happening in, in every part of uh, world next and this is about the advantages whenever we are using the different data types like the cubes the features that you are going to something like data slicing means you can see what is happening in india or other part of india to 
the other part of world to a very very specific block level also if you use uh, 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 data slicing dicing roll up and other the thing move to the next and here i am trying to represent suppose the left side is my case study that i'm i want to develop an expert system in order to predict the pandemic something like a corona type of thing that is the left side model that you have but in the right side what is happening is we have to use a lot of uh, operations in the data model something like you know cleaning of the data exploration of the data classification estimation and other the thing all these models that you are going to use in order to form this type of system is what we are going to call as data modeling then you can see here the model number one some of these models are going to apply when you are collecting the data. Some of these models are going to apply when you are grouping the data. Some of these models are going to apply when you are reporting the data. Means the model that you are going to apply in different phases of this such type of the expert system development, it is different. So in case if we, you are not applying different different logic in different different level, then the outcome that you are expecting is not going to achieve. Next slide, sir. And this is about the extraction transformation loading. Uh, what I have said before, you can see what is happening in extraction transformation. Normally, during the time of the transmission, there are, uh, uh, transformation, there are a lot of activities take place. For example, there is a meaning, there is a syntax. If you say there is a meaning and syntax and cleaning, the operations are going to be different. And in the time of loading also, we are going to take care for in order to find out the missing of the data, the fixing of the missing data. For example, in India, most of the mobile numbers are 10, 10 digit, but somewhere we get nine number that actually we have to fix the problem. Next, sir. And this is <coughs> one example of data quality. You can see the multiple identifiers are there. Different, different fields may have different, different units. For example, if I'm collecting uh, some information on medical expenses. The unit that we are going to use in US, the unit that we are going to use in uh, Arab countries and India, the units are going to be different. Even their representations are going to be different and values are going to be different. So how to use <coughs> this type of data quality problems are also take place during this one. You can see <coughs> the model and the filter that I have given there, the sample of the rules are given there. Rule number one, find out the most happening. Rule number two, rule number three, so on. So once you set up these rules and these rules are going to become the model for your uh, operation. Next, sir. And this is where I want to highlight more. Everybody is using ready-made data models, but newer data model has to be designed why because we need speedy searching for example we are finding something in google google is taking one hour two hour to find accurate information or you need to do a lot of computation so speedy data searching models and also something like clustering priority searching back <coughs> back of jobs you can see that down in the back of jobs different models are going to merge together in order to find a bag of jobs means different jobs are coming from different different model and finding the best model from all those submitted jobs has to be identified so on you can see in the right side that we have frequent pattern tree from this type of frequent pattern tree from a transaction you can see in the right side the transaction id and other thing is given i have given a small data set where the information something like COVID, SARS and cholera and other Ebola, everything is there. I am assuming that many people are working on this type of operation all over world. If we get some information access to this type of uh, operation, we can develop this type of frequent pattern tree model or bag of jobs model so that we can find out solutions very, very quickly. Next. And this is, I'm just recapping, when we say there are back of jobs, there are frequent pattern tree, there are uh, agent-based models are there, 
we have a lot of our traditional supervised and unsupervised models also. So many of the models that we are uh, sharing here, either is a traditional model or the new models, it is up to the business. What type of business you are doing, you have to deal with this business. In my thing, my business, some of my business are not, uh, 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 in my business, these existing models are not appropriate. That is why I have to go for agent-based modeling system, or I have to go for uh, back of jobs, or I have to go for a modified frequent pattern three type of models. Next. And this is about the layer technology and the methodology that we are going to use in the layer technology. You can see number one in number one, actually all those data are there. For example, these data are going to find from different part of world. Then in number two, the model has been applied, whether it is already your models, uh, the traditional models like clustering, classification, other thing or the newer model. Then number three, you are going to get a report or the prediction that if in some part of world, the items of the medical terms, is it comes something like COVID, SARS or Ebola, something like that. We have to find out how frequently these type of items are used. In the right side, you can see the results in the rank. These results are going to be ranked by using some other existing Google rank type of algorithm, something like that. And you are going to find out that this type of activity, this type of new things are going to be immersed in future day. And you can see the same thing. I'm assuming that these data are collecting from different part of world by using different different models and all these models are going to be linked under something called as a data layer architecture and then in this data layer architecture this layer architecture is going to help the information to link from different different level for example in the uh, country level in the district level in, in the magistrate level or in other school level college level something like that then we apply the model in specific uh, uh, layers specific uh, models so that our information can be achieved next and with this i also want to represent that in our ministry uh, uh, with um, uh, collaboration with NASCOM, NELIT and other thing. We are, India is a part of uh, Artificial Intelligence Club together with uh, very uh, advanced countries such as Australia, Canada and so on. This is here uh, to the all the participants here and also there is a scheme uh, rollout for AI for use. So we intend that this type of AI syllabus what is the advantage of AI and other thing is incorporated from the syllabus of class nine onwards. Next. And we are also having one expert type of uh, study called as future skill. In this future skill, the information, uh, the courses that we are displaying here, whether it's a virtual reality, 3D printing, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, everything has been shared. So. I want to invite any researcher who are working on this type of activity like modeling for the future prediction of the pandemics or uh, uh, collaborating something in uh, teaching the AI logics to the use and other thing. Next. I think with this I'm giving the references and next is thank you. My apologies, I cannot share the screen because of some problem, so it is having some other different way. All right, All thank, right. You so thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Jayanta, for such an informative okay. session on AI. Um, I would like to invite Dr. Meher Chand for presenting the certificate to Dr. Jayanta. Dr. Meher Chand. Uh, thank, thank you, you professor for your nice talk and i hope that this is a very wonderful and uh, all the participants uh, really gain this uh, uh, opportunity to attend your talk and uh, this is really very wonderful and this is a certificate for you thank you for your wonderful uh, talk uh, in this webinar thank you professor thank you thank you sir thank you sir so my share shareable uh, e email address are given so i am i'm okay to share this powerpoint with the students also in future if we can do something together thank you thank you dr jayanta for the kind gesture uh, so guys i will now take this time to introduce our next expert panelist dr hannah hachimi 
Uh, Professor Dr. Hannah Hachmi is with us from Morocco, which is the northern part of the African continent. Uh, Professor Dr. Hannah Hachmi is a PhD in Applied Mathematics and Computer Science and also a PhD in Mechanics and Systems Reliability. She is an associate professor at the Ibn Tofail University, which is in Morocco. The focus of Dr. Hachmi's teaching is on operational research, graph theory, statistics, probability, reliability, and scientific computing course. Dr. Hachmi has been invited as a visiting professor to many international universities. She is also the general chair of the International Conference on Optimization and Applications. Uh, Dr. Hachmi is also serving as an advisor and consultant to several international companies. She has over 80 publications focusing on academics as well as the industry applications of her work. Uh, there is so much more that remains unspoken of Dr. Hachmi's achievement as a professor and a research, but like I've said before, uh, we are on a time constraint. So let's move forward to hearing from the expert herself. Let's welcome the lady of the hour, Dr. Hannah Hachmi with us. Welcome to the crowd of BFGI. We all look forward to hear from you. All right. Oh, welcome back, guys. Uh, we were supposed to have a quick break between the sessions, but I obviously got carried away. I tend to do that. So my sincere apologies for the inconvenience. Uh, before going on the break, we had spoken of our next expert panelist. Please allow me to introduce her again, Dr. Hannah Hajmi. Professor Dr. Hannah Hajmi is with us from Morocco, which is the northern part of the African continent. She is a PhD in Applied Mathematics and Computer Science and also a PhD in Mechanics and Systems Reliability. Dr. Hachmi is an associate professor at the Ibn Tofail University, which is in Morocco. The focus of Dr. Hachmi's research and teaching is on operational research, graph theory, statistics, probability, reliability, and scientific computing courses. Dr. Hachimi has been invited as a visiting professor to many international universities. As for research, uh, she is the president of the Moroccan Society of Engineering Sciences and Technology, and also the general chair of the International Conference on Optimization and Applications. Uh, Dr. Hachimi is also serving as an advisor and consultant to several international companies. She has over 80 publications which focus on academics as well as industrial applications of her work. Uh, there is so much more that remains unspoken of Dr. Hannah Hachmi's achievements, both as a professor and, a re and as a researcher, uh, but the clock is ticking. So let's hear from the expert herself. Let's welcome the lady of the hour, Dr. Hannah Hachmi. Welcome to the crowd of BFGI. We all look forward to hear from you, ma'am. Hello everyone. Uh, since we are having some technical issues connecting to Dr. Hannah Hachmi, I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce our next panelist with us uh, so we can move forward to the next speaker and we'll get back to uh, Dr. Hannah Hachmi after that. Uh, so our next expert panelist is going to be Dr. K. Martin Sagayam. Uh, professor K. Martin Sagayam is currently working as an assistant professor Department of Electrical Sciences, Karunia University, which is in India. His research has included signal processing, gesture recognition, image processing, artificial intelligence, computer vision, pattern recognition. Uh, Dr. Martin has authored and co-authored 10 referred international journals. <laughs> He has also presented 13 papers in reputed international and national conferences. Uh, he has authored three chapters. He has authored three book chapters with reputed international publishers. His research articles are cited by many international journals and he has about uh, 30 citations to his credit. He has reviewed research articles from the Journal of Signal, Image and Video Processing, Intelligent Decision Technologies, International Journal of Engineering Research and Technology and many more. He is also an active member of many professional bodies, some of which include engineering and scientific research groups, 
International Society of Promising Computer Engineers, Copernicus, International Association of Computer Science and Information Technology. And there is a long list of uh, such groups that he is a part of. He has also served as a member of the editorial board of board for Journal of Mechatronics and Progress in Human Computer Interaction. I believe it's an absolute honor to have such an accomplished personality with us today. Everyone, please join me in welcoming our next panelist, Dr. Martin Sagayam, to do the today's session. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us, sir. Uh, off to you. We are looking forward to hear from you. Thank you, ma'am, for your uh, uh, for my detailed uh, introduction. Shall I share my PPT? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can start. Yeah, my PPT is uh, viewing, ma'am. Is visible? Uh, it's not visible yet, sir. Uh, you will have to share your screen with us. Dr. Meher, yes, you sir. can please. Uh, yes, it is a share. Uh, yes, so we can see your PPT, Professor. Uh, okay. It's a, it's in full screen, sir. Uh, yes, you can do if. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So can, uh, can I start now? Yes. Uh, my voice and the PPT is. Yes, sir, your voice is audible. Your PPT is uh, uh, visible to us. Yeah. All the things are fine. Yeah. So. Uh, I am good evening to one and all gathered here. First of all, I thank to the organizer for conducting this international webinar program on artificial intelligence and machine learning. I especially thank to Professor uh, Dr. Mehar Chand invited me to give a technical talk in this program. Before to my session, uh, uh, Professor Yuvan Jayanta given a very nice presentation on artificial intelligence based data modeling process and prediction. So that is uh, uh, one of the, the excellent presentation. Uh, based on that presentation, I'm giving the extended version, how the, the technology has been used for virtual reality application. And one more person, Hannah, is giving on global optimization technique. So in my presentation, I am using global optimization for computer vision algorithm. So how it has been invoked in uh, the computer vision algorithm for getting the better performance that I am going to detailly give some case study reports. And uh, now I would like to present on the, the topic computer vision algorithm based hand gesture recognition for uh, a virtual reality application. So myself, Dr. Martin Saga, I am working as assistant professor in East department at the Karni Institute of Science and Technology, Coimbatore. I have uh, uh, I have nine years teaching experience and five years research experience. As ma'am told some uh, publication details, it has been got updated for me in my Google Scholar. Please, uh, uh, please see ma'am and please see sir. I would uh, uh, tell about my institution in few words uh, uh, since uh, you should know I am from Tamil Nadu. So my institute name is Karnia Institute of Technology. It is established in 1986. It is situated in Sirwani, 35 kilometers away from Coimbatore city, located at Sirwani Hills. It is a mostly cool breeze and drizzling climate is there. It is MBA accredited courses are there and the establishment of R&D centers in, uh, based on electronics, uh, computers, mechanics, etc. Et and our college uh, atmosphere, please look into this picture. It has a engineering ranking of 72 and university ranking of 92. So I am going to introduction of my uh, topic, uh, hand gesture recognition. It is most uh, uh, in, uh, that is uh, trendy technology nowadays. Uh, everyone heard about the, the word called motion recognition. Motion recognition is a topic in software engineering and it is a direct innovation with the goal of interpreting a human signal through mathematical algorithms. So hand gesture is a strategy for non-verbal communication for individual as it expresses more liberally than the other body parts. Hand gesture acknowledgement has more prominent significance in planning a proficient human computer interaction framework, utilizing a signal as a characteristic inference interface 
uh, interface favorable to the circumstances of the moment. There are many research problem in the, the gesture technology, but in my presentation focused on the, the few uh, problem definition, like tackling the, the problem of segmentation, differentiating between the, the meaningful gesture under translational motion, recognition and accuracy. So, uh, uh, through the extended of my introduction, I, am, I would like to interest to show some of the, the recent technologies used through hand gesture recognition. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, can you see my PPT? So, can, uh, is it audible? My voice is audible to all audience. My P PPT is viewable to all. Yes, sir. Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, the extended of my introductory talk, I am, would like to interest to share some of the technologies using hand gesture technology. So this is one of the, the technology using in BMW car. So uh, the hand gesture is the one of the, the non-verbal communication. That is, please see that uh, GIF file. There is no contact between the hand and then the audio system. It has the, some uh, uh, that is features in that uh, system like accepting a call, reject a call, turn the volume up, turn volume down, change a rear view camera angle, select a navigation custom and settings. So these are the options can be done through the uh, simple hand gesture. So behind that, what are all the algorithms are there to incorporate in the microchip level? So that you're going to see in the, the forthcoming slides in detail. So the next application is the, the Mayo hand gesture uh, uh, technology. It is used for reading the electrical activity of our muscle and motion of our arm to let you wirelessly control technology with the hand gesture motion. It's significantly used for many applications such as controlling a music, games, presentations, etc. And it maps the gesture to keyboard for customized control. It also developed with the open APIs and SDKs to build a solution for home automation, drone, computer games, virtual reality applications, etc. So this is the, the main advantage of the, the Mayo arm gesture control. The next one is the, the virtual reality games. So please look into the, the first picture and the second picture. These two pictures are used by the VR headset. It is literally means that virtual reality glass. So through virtual reality glass, it is nothing but your head mounted device that provide the VR environment for VRs. So VR headset are widely used with the video games, but they are also used in the other application, including a simulator and a trainer. It comprises of a stereographic head mounted display stereo sound and head motion tracking sensors it feels to be alive in a in a in a live in the ground playing a football or any games we are playing in the indoor games and it also used for the educational application so in this slide i am showing the, the two chip file so one is for the medical system it ability it the, the ability to view the inside of the human body in virtual reality is not only used for doctor but also used for patient so the vr allows patient to be taken through their surgical plan surgical plan by virtual virtually stepping into a patient specific 360 degree virtual reality reconstruction of their anatomy and the pathology. So this is the, the main advantage of uh, the virtual reality. So nowadays we are moving to the, the mixed reality. So for uh, many application, it uh, it means that it provides us the some interactive feel between some virtual object and the human. So such type of application is called as human computer interaction. So this is for the, the medical application. You can see the anatomy of the, the uh, human system can be uh, studied uh, to the, the patient or else for the, the medical students. So this is, uh, but please look into it. It is done with the, some hand gestures. Okay, so this hand gesture has been incorporated with the 
uh, machines for the uh, to provide the, the live interaction and it uh, it it uh, it gives the uh, better understanding to the, the user so that is the, the main advantage of the, the machine learning so before getting to this topic uh, so i am going to uh, detailly talk about the hand gesture technology hand gesture technology is one of the application of artificial intelligence so why we using the artificial intelligence so, so the word artificial intelligence will provide us some intelligence to the, the system so in this system we need some input and output so the input is done by the some hand gesture the output we going to get some excellent uh, uh, features from the, the system so that is uh, nothing but the application of the artificial intelligence so that i have shown in with a simulated result uh, what is the the back end process done with the hand gesture with the stochastic mathematical approach so please look into this slide i have given some uh, literature study in my point of view so a uh, totally 127 articles are referred for uh, this hand gesture technology but apart from this also there are lot of papers are there and then uh, uh, by using this technology many of the applications are done with uh, uh, social benefits and it used for the, the medical applications industry applications etc etc so these are some comparative study of uh, the existing methods i am i am uh, skipping or please look into this i will share this ppt to the organizer so it is some advantage and disadvantage of the existing methods has been done i am uh, mostly focus on how this uh, machine learning done uh, for uh, hand gesture technology that i am going to talk in detail so these are the uh, the uh, a comparative study of the existing methods please look into these slides yeah so i mainly focus on the, the inference from the, the literature study so what are the, the problems in the hand gesture technology in real time it is lagging in robustness based on typical pattern of input that is inconsistent and lagging in robustness with rigid condition of implementation and it does not work for large posture and gesture sets and computationally expensive uh, track only open hand more training process is required it recognizes only a small set of postures and gestures are there and it does not works for large posture and gesture recognition and complex with huge number of parameters so these are the some certain problems definitions come up with some hand gesture recognition uh, articles so i am mainly focus on the, the two uh, main concern one is nothing but the accuracy and another one is nothing but the recognition rate so when i am talking in the, the webcam i am showing some gestures okay i am showing some gesture on other hand my gesture point will be delayed okay that is called as the recognition rate so this recognition rate will be uh, have the, the more impact on the real system so that is the one i am going to talk so how to recover this uh, problem by using the machine learning algorithm so everyone heard about machine learning algorithm so the machine learning algorithm is nothing but some certain step of instruction given to the system through the, the programming language it may be in a matlab python java c whatever it may be so we engineers have to be thorough with the, the logical uh, logical instruction that we have to feed it to the system and then after we going to given in the system level <coughs> sorry so this is the, the problem statement of my exper experiment that is hand gesture recognition system so the two as i told one is nothing but the accuracy and recognition and the scope for improvement also and so in the, the consistent uh, sorry conventional hand gesture recognition system so the main objective of my research in this research i am going to give a uh, talk about the, the 1d hidden markov model and 2d hidden markov model that is 1d and 2d hidden markov model is one of the stochastic mathematical approach so by using this approach i am going to classify the hand gestures uh, and uh, which is used for the system interaction 
And the third and the fourth objective, please see, I told the global optimization. So the artificial bee colony is one of the optimization technique. So in hidden Markov model, there are many state will be there. So uh, when the when hidden Markov model done some training process, some recursiveness will be occur. So recursiveness is nothing but feedbacking. That is uh, uh, when uh, that is the feedbacking repeatedly occurs. Okay, that this repetition will come up with the uh, time constraint. It may delay uh, in providing the output. Term. So that we are going to optimize the, the number of states uh, uh, by using the artificial V colony algorithm. So let me see in detail uh, each of these topics uh, in the, the forthcoming slide. So this is the, the pro proposed block diagram. The first one is the, the input uh, image database. Image database, what is meant by image database? It is the input, it may be a real uh, video or it may be an image or it may be a static uh, uh, image condition. It may be a raw data or it may be a synthetic data. So then after we have to pre-process the, the input image. So what is meant by uh, pre-processing? When capturing any live image or any image has been stored, there have some noisy content will be there. That has to be filtered out by using some filters. That is called as the pre-processing. There are a lot of operators will be there. I'm going to discuss that thing also. Followed by that feature extraction. So what is called as feature extraction? The entire hand is not given into the system for processing in the classification process. So if I'm giving some 20 or 30 GB data to the system, it will get hacked. Okay, this uh, size of data when uh, processed by the machine learning algorithm, sometimes the machine uh, memory will hang. Okay, due to the, the repetitive, uh, repetitive process. So that we have to consider only the important features from the uh, input data. So we have to extract some content. So that is called as feature extraction. There are many techniques are there to uh, extract the features from the hand. So in the hand, there are many features. So, so like uh, uh, finger, finger, uh, uh, finger features, skeletal features, valley and tip points are there. So like many feature points are there. So for to classify the, uh, for to classify the, the content, we are going to the, the classifier. So here I have given some four types of classifier. That is 1D uh, HMM based classification. Second one is 2D HMM based classification. Third one and fourth one is with optimization. That is ABC optimization I have incorporated in both the two. So then after we're going to study about how the, the performance has been improved with the first and uh, first two and the third, third and fourth. We're going to see in detail in this forthcoming slide. So the module one in module one we're going to talk about uh, where the hand gesture data has been taken and then how it has been pre-processed so uh, hand gesture data uh, as the, the 60 frame of each class which includes uh, includes a three characteristic hand shapes like flat spread and the v, v shape so and the three characteristic of motion like left right and contract. The images has been shown below. It is a sample image. So these images has been taken from Cambridge University. So I have uh, already collaborated with one of the professor at Cambridge University and we, uh, we, we have worked together uh, for this project. Actually this project, uh, in this project I have shown only the hand gesture and how uh, it is working with the machine learning algorithm. So we have already done one project with the hand gesture recognition based wheelchair so there is no joystick will be there in a wheelchair so just we have to show the hand gesture in the wheelchair for moving forward uh, backward left and right and uh, and for to acceleration also some controls will be there in a wheelchair so for physically impaired people this hand gesture has been used without any joystick or any remote control so this is the, the database I have used. 
So image pre-processing, as I already told, image pre-processing is used for to filter out to be the noisy content and unwanted frequency component from the input image. So it is uh, um, it is produced to transform data into a form that can be more efficiently processed. So in this, I have used one of the, the technique called non-local mean filter. So please look into this equation V of i is equal to U of i plus N of i. So whatever image taken, so true value will also be there and the noise is also there. So our ma main objective is that to remove the N of i component from the image. So that is the, the main objective of the, the non-local mean filtering. So how this non-local mean filtering used to, for image denoising thing. So which takes uh, the mean value of the, the group of the, the pixel uh, surrounding a target pixel to smooth the image. So please look into this image. So the point P has been noted. So across uh, uh, adjacent points like Q1, Q2, Q3 are there. So those are the, the pixel of group together with respect to the, the point P. This result in much greater post filtering clarity and less loss of detail in the image compared with the local mean algorithm. So that local mean algorithm provide the, the resultant equation of D of P is equal to modulus of V of N minus NP minus uh, V of NQ, the whole square. 2f. So what it mean means? So the p is the the point which we located. Where q is the the neighborhood of the, the pixel p. So like the distance vector uh, algorithm, we are calculating all uh, value through the the mean point, and at last this is the the output. So please look into the the left and right side uh, uh, before applying to the the non-local mean filter. After applying to the the non-local mean filter. So before applying to the local mean filter, some uh, that is I have encircled in the right hand side, there have some uh, component that is uh, unwanted frequency component, maybe uh, almost to resemble when this has been taken into the, the pixel and the intensity format that uh, you can uh, see that some unwanted frequency component will be there. So that has been filtered out by using the, the non-local mean. So these are the, the performance measures I have taken for these hand gestures. There are totally nine gesture points will be there. So for that I have uh, taken mean square error and PSNR. So this is the, the uh, value compared for the um, that is uh, the that is Cambridge hand gesture data. The second module, the second module will be the most predominant one, the feature extraction. In feature extraction, as I already told, the feature extraction is to reduce the dimensionality of the image data. So in this feature extraction, I have used the one of the, the technique called histogram of oriented gradient. So everyone aware about the word called gradient. Gradient is nothing but a delta dot some function. So for that, we're going to find what is the, the histogram feature so that we uh, will uh, see in detail so whenever the any object is moving from original point to sorry initial point to the some target point it has to be find the gradient and also the angle in degree so angular motion is also fine so that will be find in the, the momentum uh, with the limit of some threshold value so through that we can find some uh, uh, so please look into the, the sample image so the one for flat to left, another one for the, the flat to right. So in this case, the cell size is eight cross eight and block overlap is one cross one, number of bin is nine. So for that, the matrix file generated is this. So wherever zero is there, there is no signal is there. Wherever the, the values are there, there only the object is there. So that values alone be, will be fitted for the classifier. So that will be your feature values. So this should be labeled in the, the machine learning. As uh, Sir told in the first session, Sir told in machine learning, there is a two, uh, that is a two learning schemes are there. One is supervised learning and another one is unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, 
all data has been labeled and the labeled data has to be processed for the reclassifier where unsupervised uh, learning is the one there is no labeling in our data there is a cluster of data will be there that will be fed into the classifier and that will be applied into the the classifier part so now we going to the the classification procedure in this classification procedure we going to detailly talk about the the markov model so the markov model uh, the uh, that is, sorry the hidden markov model is invented by the the scientist called markov so he is the one developed this algorithm it is one of the the stochastic mathematical approach it has been it has a dimension of 1d and 2d but uh, based on our dimensionality we can improve to up to 5d also so this is the the model uh, for my frame uh, that is proposed to framework so the input frames has been given there are 60 frames for individual class okay there are in my in my work there are five different classes are being suggested so in five classes Uh, in each class, there are 60 frames will be there. So that will be fed into the the Hangesher uh, model. So each model will be developed uh, as a hidden Markov model. So for the predicting the the gesture point, for what type of gesture we are going to get at the output. So that will be learned in the training phase. So whenever this classification process has been going on, so the machine will be trained. and after that one day we have to test okay so the in training process only it will take more computation so let me see about one d hidden markov model classification so please look into the, the hidden markov model state diagram it is very linear there is a four states will be there and one self looping uh, that is uh, uh, ot ot plus 1 ot plus 2 and ot plus 3 so like this only the probability state will be distributed for each state so this uh, based on the uh, that is uh, based on the, the maximum uh, uh, probability condition we going to find which uh, which gesture going to be uh, come at the output state among the, the various gestures we have used in our input side so based on the, the probability of occurrence so that as we occur at the output state it is a 1d hidden markov model so what is the 1d means only one dimensional will be there that is uh, you know that one dimensional means only one parameter will be given so we how so hello good morning everybody so sorry for the technical problem i i joined the meeting but i don't know why I didn't tell you, and I cannot share my presentation. So, the, so I think I'm on this solution. So, to record my presentation and share it with you. So, uh, my name is Hana Hashimi, associate professor of applied mathematics at the Sultan Muley Sliman University in Bani Malal, Morocco. And I ask to change, please, my name is Hashimi, and uh, my affiliation is uh, Sultan Muley Sliman University in Bani Malal, Morocco. I am the president of the Moroccan Society of Engineering Sciences and Technology. I would uh, first like to thank the organizer of this online webinar and especially Professor Dr. Mihar Chan for the invitation to give a talk in this conference webinar in uh, artificial intelligence and I hope everybody is safe and in good health on this lockdown against coronavirus. So, uh, my presentation uh, Today is in this slide global optimization using bio-inspired algorithm for artificial intelligence application. A presentation that links big data, machine learning, biology, and mathematics. So far for my online, outline uh, or plane for this presentation. I opted for the next outline. I begin with the motivation of my interest and access of research expressed on a video that I share with you. Uh, then a brief description on the optimization. Then an organic algorithm panorama inspired. And then the algorithm Firefly. Subsequently, 
I give some applications of this algorithm in artificial intelligence. So for uh, my motivation, so I will share with, share with you uh, a video uh, that is uh, not that is uh, give an idea, an overview of the field that optimization is present. So optimization, uh, as you know, is a branch of applied mathematics that derives from operational research. It occupies an indispensable place for the modeling of problems in the engineering sciences sector, namely uh, like electronic mecha mechanics, hydraulic, or also industry. Uh, this video just focus on this area of application and those uh, fields need artificial intelligence for development and for to improve some applications in this area. As I already said, uh, optimization is a vacuous lean chain, uh, finance, hydraulic, aeronautics or other. Uh, it is a broad area of mathematics that is a part of decision support tool for operational research. So for the next slide, uh, this is uh, the plan or out, outline for the optimization. This is the uh, determinix method. So optimization is uh, divided to two uh, parts, deterministics method and heuristics method. And also I will talk about the hybridization and about the mono and multi-objective uh, problem. So as you know, for the optimization, uh, I'm going to focus on single and multi-objective problem in the optimization of one or more function and of course optimizing means either maximizing or minimizing so that you know for formulation we must to formulate the problem and to uh, go uh, to derive the, the variable of decision and also the cost function and after that uh, we, uh, we decide that we can we use the, the one function to, money, to optimize or two functions to optimize? And also to optimize is necessary first or to formulate the problem. And also to decide which uh, function used to optimize, maximizing or minimizing and so on. So for this uh, lecture for bio-inspired uh, algorithm, so that the algorithm that I use, they are uh, focused on uh, behavior of animals or insects. Uh, so it said, uh, it was said that is biological the commentary video, but I ensure you it's smart because optimizing, as you know, it's based on methods either exact like Newton, branch and brown, or heuristics as evolutionary algorithm. For my scientific research, I focus on bio-inspired meta -heuristics such as the genetic algorithm, Cuckoo Search, Firefly, and others that we will discover today later in this lecture. And the choice of this algorithm, uh, because uh, there are very, uh, for every algorithm has four fundamental characteristics. The first one is the complexity, the second one, the reliability and the robustness. And without forgetting the time of computing, this choice returns to to the easy implementation of uh, the algorithms uh, and their MATLAB or, la or other softwares like Abacus or ANSYS or CATIA. The robustness absorption of several variables, uh, less computing time. The reliability gives better solution even if uh, one change of field or application. So the first algorithm that I uh, taught today, I start with the particle swarm optimization or the particle swarm uh, algorithm. It is an algorithm inspired by the animal ethology of migration of fish from ocean to sea or birds from one contain to another. These groups of animals scatter by following the topology either in star, in ring, or radius. This algorithm has two uh, variants, either uh, with neighborhood or without neighborhood. Uh, I opted for one uh, with neighborhood because it gives more reliable results uh, as it explores space larger individual, each particle competes with the, its neighbor, and then we keep the optimal objective function 
evaluate. So the second one is the famous genetic algorithm based on analogy of DNA. And even if in every old and greedy in terms of compilation time, but it remains a robust and reliable algorithm because of its operator of crossing and mutation, which gives a young, it would give it, it a young generation black. The third one is the harmonic algorithm. is a new algorithm that has made a revolution in the context of music algorithms because uh, its idea is simple. is to create harmony in the musical composition. This harmony can be expressed in waves of periodicity, of vibrance in the sound uh, intervals, the Stranger function, uh, for example. The third one is the cuckoo search, this famous bird. So the cuckoo search is an algorithm based on behavior function of this parasitic bird that is not able to have nests. So it hangs its nets, uh, eggs in nets of other type of the bird, the, f uh, the food in fall. The mechanism gives the idea of create function mimetic. Uh, so for this algorithm, we use it to uh, to extract the function of mimetic to use it in past algorithm or in uh, discover the behavior of other organisms. So the second or the, the next algorithm, the algorithm of ant colony, the principle is the same as that of the colonies, it is based on the visibility, the phenomenon pheromon rate on the end, the evaporation of this pheromon, not is tied by its strong use for the short part and for the image recognition. So the last one is the Firefly algorithm. This algorithm uh, is inspired of the movement of uh, critters. They are insects insects that communicate in them by the brightness intensity that is given by the following expression. So this algorithm is characterized by three components. The intensity, first one, the distance, the attractivity, and the, the movement. So now uh, I want to, uh, to share with you some results. Uh, goes to give the results of implementation of some algorithm using the hybridization. And these techniques is uh, either in series or in parallel or in insertion. Hybridization is techniques to reduce the calculation time or give more performance to our algorithm. This hybridization is variable to genetic algorithm and PSO. Uh, same thing uh, when we have, when we can make a true in, in this, uh, sorry, in this table, so we can uh, remark that for PSO, they are uh, more time for computing, but for uh, GPSO, they are more time, but uh, the success rate and the, the number of iteration is very low. So we, we gain on time of computing and also on the quality of the cost function. The same for the habitation of the uh, harmonic, uh, research, uh, harmonic search algorithm and PSO. So the results uh, give that when we make the hybridization between the two algorithms, so the results are better because we give on the quality of the cost function and also on time of computing. And for uh, our work, the best uh, result is following the hybridization between Firefly and Cuckoo Search uh, algorithm. This expands and benchmark function package. Uh, it is found that this hybridization gives satisfactory results in terms of optimally of function as well as time. Now I switch to the uh, applications. So for my first application is the complexity of the application of bioinspired algorithm uh, is in the choice of the appropriate algorithm and the validation and the implementation of this algorithm related to the, to the area of fields like 
uh, electronics. So uh, this problem is how we can <laughs> minimize the three functions all in the same time, is to minimize uh, multi-objective functions. Uh, so those functions, after implemented our algorithm, then validated and hybrid them, uh, on a set of benchmark function, we pass to domain uh, of application. I start with the continuity of work of uh, uh, my students in electronic. <coughs> it was a project within the framework of the Patterschnepp with Thales in Neurofilms uh, laboratory in France. This project consists in optimizing the multi-objective system of three functions. The first one is G1, the maximum shear stress between the substrate and the bat. The G2 is the maximum shear stress between the pad and the wire. And G3 is the equivalent maximum stress in the wire. And the, all, the objective or the goal of this optimization is to minimize the displacement heat in this electronic devices, to use it after that in, in the tracking uh, using the artificial intelligence on this uh, pandemic period. So how we can use uh, these uh, electronic devices to uh, uh, make an application against COVID-19 to uh, locate it, the, the person affected by the pandemic. So the second uh, work, it was all the second uh, application. is related to the mechanical work between uh, Ibn Sofa University and inside the in Morocco and case with, uh, with the company in metallurgy. The problem is to make the reliability study on the manufacture of rings and sector flames for objective and uh, to minimize faults and all the return because they do not comply with the specification. So this problem, it was to make the mesh of those uh, two types of uh, flange, ring or in sector, and also use the device of the sensor recognition to uh, decide which one is better for the, the, uh, the company. So this, the third application is uh, the optimization in hydraulic. This problem is carried out in collaboration with the Laboratory of Convex Variable Analysis in uh, Science, uh, Faculty of Sciences in Kenita. Uh, the aim is to make classification of the thin water uh, field and also to determine the water quality. And to, to, to determine the water quality, we must to uh, identify the quality function and also the, f the parameter of decision and make uh, the constraint to, uh, to solve the problem. And the goal is to classify uh, the region of the good water in Morocco using the dispositive of uh, quality uh, water that is uh, very uh, famous in, uh, in this area. So as a conclusion, uh, I, uh, I, I, I am uh, very interested in developing of bi bio inspired algorithm by applying them to multi objective problem in automotive and mechatronic industry because those three fields need a lot of uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning for databases to collect the, 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 uh, the parameters and after that to make the analysis and after that to make the, the application, for example, to uh, recognize the, the, the shape or the face of person and also recognize the shape of uh, objects. And also I am interested in traffic modeling and the smart cities uh, modeling. So I share with you some papers uh, in this field of optimization and bio-inspired algorithm and its application in uh, several fields. And also I share with you my three books uh, in optimization and metallistic applications. The two first one are in, in French, in uh, French language, but the, the, the third one is English, hybridization of inspired metallistic for global optimization. And also I invite you please to join us for the, uh, this, 
the seventh uh, uh, IAAA edition of International Conference on Optimization and Applications. Uh, it will be held in, uh, in Germany, in Australia University. And also uh, to join our international innovative competition, Les Channels, for the next year, which will be the sixth, the sixth edition. And for the, con the conference, it will be the seventh edition. So thank you very much. And I hope that my lecture, it was very quick because I have a meeting after and I thank a lot Dr. Mehar for uh, the invitation and I will share with him this uh, record to, uh, to, to uh, project it uh, and share it with the audience. And also uh, in the first slide of my presentation, there is my email so you can email me and ask me and I will reply. Thank you very much and have a nice day and good health during this pandemic period. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Whereas other have very less percentage, it is a older technique. I'm now, I'm uh, summarized my uh, work and I'm going to tell some what are the future works are there in hand gesture recognition. So I have, in this uh, uh, presentation, I have more talked about hidden Marco model approach. That is one of the machine learning algorithm. And afterwards, I have talked about the, the global search, uh, global search optimization. In global search optimization, specifically, I talked about the artificial bee colony approach. So how these two uh, technique has been incorporated and how the performance has been uh, uh, given more, uh, that is with and without optimization technique that has been detailedly uh, given a presentation here. This work is not only done in the machine learning. Nowadays, we are going for deep learning uh, technologies. So in deep learning technologies, I give one example as human brain. Okay, human brain can learn a lot of things and it can produce a lot of innovation. Okay, so like deep learning also do a lot, but a computationally uh, expensive. Okay, why means it need the higher GPU when you go for the deep learning technique compared to the uh, machine learning technique. So in this work, I have uh, give a broad uh, study on the, the machine learning algorithm. Machine learning algorithm uh, is one of the uh, most popular in the, the data uh, science and uh, it has been used to uh, significantly to solve the human problems. Okay, where the human problems is there. As I told, one of the, the problem is physically impaired people. So in physically impaired people, some people is cannot able to control the, the joystick. So they can do some simple gesture or by touching any one of the, the sensors, it can able to move. So instead of uh, providing the, the joystick, so please imagine a joystick have some one button. It is hard to push uh, forward, backward, left, right. Okay. So that uh, that may be uh, trouble for the, the old age people or it may be uh, for the physically impaired people. So I have replaced that uh, uh, system, remote system, remote control system, and uh, using some simpler gesture motion, we have tried to solve for the, the physically impaired people. So we already applied for patent also for that uh, product. It is a very good product. So once it come, I will uh, show to you and I will uh, release to everyone. Please look into it. So these are the, the reference of my work. So in future, if you want to have any collaborations and if you have any um, uh, any support needed for uh, this uh, work, so please contact me. Please note out my email ID and my contact address. So thank you very much uh, for giving this opportunity for uh, uh, presenting in this uh, reputed uh, uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shagayam, for such a knowledgeable session. It was a very interesting talk, um, very engaging, if I may add.
uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the session and some of our audience have also dropped some questions regarding the presentation. Um, uh, I'm going to forward those questions to you so we can get some answers to our listeners. Would that be all right with you, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Please, please uh, send me the questions. OK, so uh, one of our um, attendee has asked what would be some virtual reality tools and techniques for product development? Yeah, the work, the word virtual reality is nothing but there is no contact between human and the, the machine that is called as a virtual platform. So what are all the, the tools can be preferred means we can use Python, we can use uh, uh, C, C++ embedded system uh, C, uh, Visual C, etc, etc. So in my work I have used the, the Python. So the Python used, uh, uh, it is a user friendly tool. It is an open source tool for doing any project. And after completing a simulated work, we can dump the, the same Python code in the, the chip. So when you go for some product development, as I told for my work, I have went for product development like wheelchair. So in wheelchair, we have used the, the Raspberry Pi kit and we have used the uh, microcontroller. In microcontroller, this code has been fused and we have made one product uh, and it has been get commercialized. So this is the, the procedure we have to follow. So we should not stop to the, the simulation level. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, we have another question. Uh, it's also related to virtual reality, but it's regarding the applications of virtual reality. Yeah. So virtual reality, the word virtual reality, I will tell. So now we are doing the virtual reality. So we, I am in one place, but uh, my talk is uh, coming to everywhere. So it is also virtual reality, but Apart from virtual reality, nowadays uh, more uh, researchers talks about mixed reality. So I will come really in before to the audience and I will be uh, inspired them by giving lectures in before to their naked eye. So without using any platform that is uh, they may get, they, they may use the virtual Google class or uh, some uh, some virtual class in their life and they can see me uh, as uh, I am standing in before them and presenting, but I am not there. OK, so that is called as a virtual reality. So uh, so this virtual reality platform work uh, with the back end with the artificial intelligence. So in artificial intelligence, they have some machine learning approach or deep learning approach for to control or for, for, for to interact with them. Any more questions? No? Uh, yes, actually, I have a couple more questions. Uh, uh, someone is asking about the use of uh, these techniques in medical science. Yeah. So in medical science nowadays, uh, as I shown in my PPT, uh, for uh, uh, seeking the anatomy of the human body. So when I am talking uh, without uh, Picturize anything to the audience. So it is difficult to understand the, the concept. So if I show the anatomy of the body in real, so I'm augmenting the, the picture in before to them, to their eye, so it is understand to the all the audience and it will be easily understand by the audience what is the, the process is going on internally. So so what only nowadays augmented reality with virtual reality. So these two are in two extreme and so these two are combined together for just the mixed reality. So that I have shown in my PPT. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, and there's another uh, one of our attendees who is asking about uh, where to get data set in case of machine learning scope in virtual reality. So the question is regarding data sets. So the data, uh, actually there are two types of data are there. One is online data, another one is uh, real data. So the real data can be get to the, the camera. Uh, for suppose I am working on with the human brain. So I can collect the, the data from the hospital in real data and I can use those data uh, for machine learning approach 
if i if that is not possible i can use the online data also on online data there are many labs are there like mri lab and then some artificial intelligence lab like that many labs are there and github the website called github so in these websites there are online data is also available so through that data also the uh, researchers can be used so uh, there is two uh, category so uh, as uh, researchers prefer uh, which one they need they can use Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Sagayan. And we have a final question for the day. Uh, it's yes. regarding artificial bee colony optimization. Yes. What is that? Yeah, uh, actually, I told about global optimization algorithm. The global optimization algorithm is nothing but uh, I told that uh, to search from initial point to the target point. So, in this algorithm, also talk about that artificial bee colony. So there are three type of B I told, okay, that is the three category of B. So one B is nothing but a scout B. So the scout B will respond to other two Bs from initial point to the end point where the near food is there. Okay, near food is there. So I am correlating this concept with the machine learning approach to get to the shortest path. Okay, so as as per the B concept, artificial B concept, what they will do means they will find out the where the near feed is there by uh, by smelling the the food and they will find out where the near feed so near food is available for them for entire B colony entire B colony where the the food is available. So similarly here in our approach, this approach has been invoked in the machine learning to find out the where the, the shortest path is available to get the best cost function. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sagayam. I am hoping that our audience are uh, satisfied with the answers. Uh, thank you so much for patiently answering all the queries and thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, we are grateful for your participation in our webinar. Um, and for the last time today, guys, let's have Dr. Meher Chand with us for presenting the certificate to Dr. Sagayam. Dr. Meher Chand, thank please. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, ma'am, and thank you, Professor, for your wonderful talk. Uh, you have covered ma uh, many topics: uh, medical application, hand gas technology, and its uh, applications, comparison of existing method and accuracy, latest techniques and uh, problems, and uh, the wonderful uh, block diagram and supervised learning. Unsupervised okay. learning basic concept has been covered and uh, also the uh, application how we can use in the machine learning and the latest uh, algorithm which you expand uh, with the, their application hidden Markov model and uh, its applications and at the end uh, you explain the future work for the uh, participants and I hope this talk is really wonderful for the, all the participants and uh, they will attend from this lecture. And now I am presenting you a, a certificate of appreciation. Uh, this you. is uh, uh, your certificate professor. And you. uh, I hope in the future we will also uh, do some more uh, such type of event and uh, in the future um, I hope uh, uh, your availability for this type of uh, events. Thank you very much, dear professor, for Thank you. uh, your nice talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you professor, for giving me opportunity. I especially thank to all organizers and then especially to Dr. Mehar Chand. Uh, so in future also, I am happy to collaborate with you. So thank you very much. One second. Uh, thank you, professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, we are going to move forward with our uh, session. I have to regretfully inform to you guys that Dr. Hannah Hachimi wasn't able to be with us today due to technical issues. We weren't able to fix the problems, uh, but she was kind enough to reach out to us through a video presentation, and I'm sure that this presentation is going to be very useful as well. So let's please all of us stay tuned for Dr. Hannah's presentation. I would like to request our technical team to please pull up the video presentation by Dr. Hannah Achimi. 
So hello, good morning, everybody. So sorry for the technical problem. I uh, I joined the meeting, but I don't know why <coughs> I didn't hear you and I cannot share my presentation. So though, so I think I'm on this solution. So to record my presentation and share it with you. So uh, my name is Hannah Hashimi, Associate Professor of Applied Mathematics at the Sultan Muley Sliman University in Bani Malal, Morocco. And I ask to change, please. <laughs> my name is Hashimi and uh, my affiliation is uh, Sultan Muley Sliman University in Bani Malal, Morocco. I am the president of the Moroccan Society of Engineering Sciences and Technology. I would uh, first like to thank the organizer of this online webinar and especially Professor Dr. Mihar Chan for the invitation to give a talk in this conference webinar in uh, artificial intelligence. And I hope everybody is safe and in good health on this lockdown against coronavirus. So uh, my presentation uh, today is in light global optimization using bio-inspired algorithm for artificial intelligence applications. A presentation that links big data, machine learning, biology, and mathematics. So far for my online outline uh, or plan for this presentation, I opted for the next outline. I began with the motivation of my interest and access of research expressed on a video that I share with you. Uh, then a brief description on the optimization. Then an organic algorithm panorama in spite. And then the algorithm Firefly. Subsequently, I give some applications of this algorithm in artificial intelligence. So for uh, my motivation, so I will share with, share with you a, a video uh, that is uh, not that is uh, give an idea, an overview of the fields that optimization is present. So optimization, uh, as you know, is a branch of applied mathematics that derives from operational research. It occupies an indispensable place for the modeling of problems in the engineering sciences sector, namely uh, like electronic mecha mechanics, hydraulic or also industry. Uh, this video just focus on this area of application and those uh, fields need artificial intelligence for development and for to improve some applications in these areas. As I already said, uh, optimization is a vacuous lean chain uh, finance, hydraulic, aeronautics, or other. Uh, it is a broad area of mathematics that is a part of decision support tool for operational research. So for the next slide, uh, this is uh, the plan or out outline for the optimization. This is the uh, determinix method. So optimization is uh, divided to two uh, parts deterministics method and heuristics method. And also I will talk about the hybridization and about the mono and multi-objective uh, problems. So as you know, for the optimization, uh, I'm going to focus on single and multi-objective problem in the optimization of one or more function. And of course, optimizing means either maximizing or minimizing. So that you know, for formulation, we must to formulate the problem and to uh, go uh, to derive the, the variable of decision and also the cost function. And after that, uh, we, we decide that we can we use the, the one function to, money, to optimize or two functions to optimize. And also to optimize is necessary first or to formulate the problem. And also to decide which uh, function used to optimize, maximizing or minimizing and so on. So for this uh, lecture for bio-inspired uh, algorithm, so that the algorithm that I used, they are uh, focused on uh, behavior of animals or insects. Uh, so it said, uh, it will say that is a biological documentary video, but I assure you it's mad because optimizing, as you know, 
it's based on methods either exact like Newton, branch and Brown, or heuristics as evolutionary algorithm. For my scientific research, I focus on bio-inspired meta such as the genetic algorithm, Cuckoo Search, Firefly, and others that we will discover today later in this lecture. And the choice of this algorithm, uh, because uh, there are very, uh, for every algorithm has four fundamental characteristics. The first one is the complexity, the second one, the reliability and the robustness. And without forgetting the time of computing, this choice returned to, to the easy implementation of uh, the algorithms uh, and their MATLAB or, la or other softwares like Abacus or ANSYS or CATIA. The robustness absorption of several variables, uh, less compute and time. The reliability gives better solution even if uh, one change of field or application. So the first algorithm that I uh, talk today, I start with the particle swarm optimization or the particle swarm uh, algorithm. It is an algorithm inspired by the animal ethology of migration of fish from ocean to sea or bird from one continent to another. These groups of animals scatter by following a topology either in star, in ring, or radius. This algorithm has two variants, either uh, with neighborhood or without neighborhood. Uh, I opted for one uh, with neighborhood because it gives more reliable results uh, as it explores space larger individual each particle competed with the, its neighbor, and then we keep the optimal objective function evaluate. So the second one is the famous genetic algorithm based on analogy of DNA, and even if in every old and greedy in terms of compilation time, but it remains a robust and reliable algorithm because of its operator of crossing and mutation, which gives a young, it would give it, it a young generation last. The third one is the harmonic algorithm. It's a new algorithm that has made a revolution in the context of music algorithms because uh, its idea is simple, is to create harmony in the musical composition. This harmony can be expressed in waves of periodicity, of vibrant in sound uh, interval, the stringent function, uh, for example. The third one, is the cuckoo search, this famous bird. So the cuckoo search is an algorithm based on behavior function of this plastic bird that is not able to have nest. So it hugs its nets, uh, eggs in nets of others, type of the bird, the, f the food in fall. In mechanism gives the idea of create function mimetic. Uh, so, for this algorithm, we use it to uh, to extract the function of mimetic to use it in path algorithm or in uh, discover the behavior of other organism. So, the second or the, the next algorithm, the algorithm of ant colony, the principle is the same as that of the Bee colonies, it is based on the visibility, the phenomenon, pheromone rates on the end, the evaporation of this pheromone, and this guy is tied by its strong use for the short path and for the image recognition. So the last one is the Firefly algorithm. This algorithm uh, is inspired of the movement of uh, critters, they are insects insects that communicate in them by the brightness intensity that is given by the following expression. So this algorithm is characterized by three components. The intensity, first one, the distance, the attractivity, and the, the movement. So now uh, I want to, uh, to share with you some results. 
uh, goes to give the results of implementation of some algorithm using the hybridization. And these techniques is uh, either in series or in parallel or in insertion. Hybridization is technique to reduce the calculation time or give more performance to our algorithm. This hybridization is reable to genetic algorithm and PSO. Uh, same thing. Uh, when we have, when we can make sure in, in this uh, sorry, in this table, so we can uh, remark that for PSO, or they are uh, more time for computing, but for uh, GPSO, they are more time, but uh, the success rate and the the number of iteration is very low. So we we gain on time of computing and also of, on the quality of the cost function. The same for the hybridization of the uh, harmonic uh, research, uh, harmonic search algorithm and PSO. So the results uh, gives that when we make the hybridization between the two algorithms. So the results are better because we gain on the quality of the cost function and also on time of computing. And for uh, our works, the best uh, results, it's following the hybridization between Firefly and Cocoa Search uh, algorithm, this express and benchmark function package. Uh, it is found that this hybridization gives satisfactory results in terms of optimal lay of function as well as time. Now I switch to the uh, applications. So for my first application is the complexity of the application of bioinspired algorithm uh, is in the choice of the appropriate algorithm and the validation and the implementation of this algorithm related to the to the area of fields like uh, electronics. So uh, this problem is how we can <laughs> minimize the three functions all in the same times is to minimize uh, multi-objective function. Uh, so those function after implemented our algorithm, then validated and hybrid them uh, on a set of benchmark function, we pass to domain uh, of application. I start with the continuity of work of uh, uh, my students in electronic. <coughs> it was a project within the framework of the Patterschnepp with Thales in Neurofilms uh, laboratory in France. This project consists in optimizing the multi-objective system of three functions. The first one is G1, the maximum shear stress between the substrate and the bat. The G2 is the maximum shear stress between the pad and the wire. And G3 is the equivalent maximum stress in the wire. And the, all, the objective or the goal of this optimization is to minimize the displacement heat in these electronic devices to use it after that in, in the tracking uh, using the artificial intelligence on this uh, uh, pandemic period. So how we can use uh, these uh, electronic devices to uh, uh, make an application against COVID-19 to uh, locate it, the the person affected by the pandemic. So the second uh, work, it was all the second uh, application, is related to the mechanical work between uh, Ibn Sofa University and inside Jedina in Morocco and came with, uh, with the company in metallurgy. So the problem is to make the reliability study on the manufacture of rings and sector flange for objective and uh, to minimize faults and all the return because they do not comply with the specification. So this problem, it was to make the mesh of those uh, two types of uh, flange ring or in sector and also use the device of the sensor recognition to uh, decide which one it's better for the the uh, the company so this the third application 
is uh, the optimization in hydraulic. This problem is carried out in collaboration with the Laboratory of Convex Variable Analysis in uh, Science uh, Faculty of Sciences in Kenita. Uh, the aim is to make classification of the thin water uh, field and also to determine the water quality. And to, to, to determine the water quality, we must to uh, identify the quality function and also the, the parameter of decision and make uh, the constraint to, uh, to solve the problem. And the goal is to classify uh, the region of the good water in Morocco using the dispositive of uh, quality uh, water that is uh, very uh, famous in, uh, in this area. So as a conclusion, uh, I, uh, I, I, I am uh, very interested in developing of bi bio-inspired algorithms by applying them to multi-objective problems in automotive and mechatronic industry because those three fields need a lot of uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning for databases to collect the, 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 uh, the parameters and after that to make the analysis and after that to make the the application, for example, to uh, recognize the, the, f the shape or the face of person and also recognize the shape of uh, object. And also I am interested in traffic modeling and the smart cities uh, modeling. So I share with you some papers uh, in these fields of optimization and bio-inspired algorithm and its applications in uh, several fields. And also, I share with you my three books uh, in optimization and metaheuristic applications. The two first one are in, in French, in uh, French language, but the, the, the third one is English, hybridization of inspired metaheuristic for global optimization. And also, I invite you please to join us for the, uh, the, the seventh uh, uh, IAAA edition of International Conference on Optimization and Applications. Uh, it will be held in, uh, in Germany, in Ostfalia University. And also uh, to join our international innovation competition, Let's Challenge, the next year, which will be the sixth, the sixth edition. And for the, con the conference, it will be the seventh edition. So thank you very much. And I hope that my lecture, it was very quick because I have a meeting after and I thank a lot Dr. Mehar for uh, the invitation and I will share with him this uh, record to, uh, to, to uh, project it uh, and share it with the audience. And also uh, in the first slide of my presentation, there is my email so you can email me and ask me and I will reply. Thank you very much and have a nice day and good health during this pandemic period. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Uh, please visit the chat section of this webinar for the link to this video. Uh, we are at the final moment of our day one. Uh, we had some inconveniences during the session. Uh, once again, I offer my sincere apologies for that. Uh, we try to do our best given the situation at, an, at hand. Um, and just like that, guys, uh, we have reached the end of our today's session. Uh, before we part ways for the day, I want to remind everyone to fill out the feedback form for day one. Uh, the link uh, has been posted in the chat section. Uh, your feedback would be very helpful to us for making this experience better. So if you would please be kind enough to take a quick minute to open the chats and uh, provide us your input. I would like to thank all the attendees on behalf of BFGI for joining us in this webinar. Uh, your presence is what gives the meaning to this webinar. Um, it is my sincere hope that you guys will be leaving today with a better understanding of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. We appreciate your company. Thank you so much for being a part of this webinar with us. I would also like to thank our keynote speakers, Dr. Jayanta, Dr. Hachimi, and Dr. Sagayam, uh, who have made this webinar such a knowledgeable experience for all of us. Uh, and I say this on behalf of BFGI, we are grateful for your time. We are grateful for your knowledge. And above all, we appreciate your willingness to spend your valuable time with us. It was an absolute honor to share space with you. Uh, even if it's virtual space, it's still an honor. 
uh, we hope to maintain this collaboration for years to come so we can continue learning from the best. Thank you so much, sirs and madam. I would also like to express huge gratitude for our collaborators, Scientific Innovation Research Group, Egypt, Moroccan Society of Engineering Sciences and Technology, Morocco, IEEE Canada, and National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, which is in Chandigarh. Uh, it's worth mentioning that this webinar was only possible because of you guys. We are thankful for your support and your time. Thank you so much. It's very important that I also mention our very capable team and internal panelists who have been working for this webinar for many weeks now. Dr. Upinder Kaur, Dr. Shalu Gupta, Dr. Meher Chan, Mr. Gurpreet Singh, we appreciate your efforts in taking care of all the technicalities and functioning of this webinar. Uh, guys, I have literally woken up to the text from this team at 5 in the morning, at 11 at night, and I'm not saying this to complain. I am bringing this up to highlight the dedication and hard work of this team. They have been working around the clock. There were no non-working hours for them. There were no days off for them. They have continuously working on this for many weeks now. So let's take a moment to thank them. I think BFGI is very fortunate to have such an organized and hardworking team. And finally, I would like to thank Mr. Talwinder Singh, who is taking care of this webinar from the back end. They really make it look like it's easy because everything is running smoothly, but uh, we do understand the hard work that goes into that. So thank you so much for your efforts for making this webinar a beautiful experience for all of us. We're grateful for that. And with that, guys, I am going to wrap this up. This was all for today. We are officially done with the first day of our international webinar on AI and ML. It has been a successful venture so far. Uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your day. Stay safe and let's meet up here again tomorrow.